delve further into what the analysts are saying about Africa's prospects in 2021. We're now joined by Professor Chris Isike. He is from the University of Pretoria. Great to have you on the show with us, uh, Professor. Now, Africa certainly faced its first continent-wide recession in two decades uh, in 2020, given, of course, the devastating impact of COVID-19. How optimistic are you uh, that Africa's economies can get their mojo back in 2021? What are your expectations? Well, good evening uh, to you and your viewers. Um, I'm, I'm not so optimistic, um, although the potentials for recovery um, is, is there. Uh, two months ago, I would have been much more uh, optimistic. In fact, I would say very optimistic but with the second wave uh, proving to be more devastating for the continent, especially given how fast this new strain, uh, you know, spreads the virus, uh, Africa may eventually in 2021 face uh, harder lockdowns um, that will further harm its chances of, um, you know, uh, post-COVID economic recovery. And then secondly, uh, it seems that we will not be getting uh, vaccines in the continent until the second half of the year. Uh, and that will mean that uh, getting the so-called herd immunity to uh, get the economy in full throttle may be a bit more challenging or will happen much later in the year. Um, again, to uh, many governments in the continent have, uh, you know, faced high or what called huge debts, uh, you know, burdens that I feel will also hamper economic recovery. However, all said and done, the potential, like I said, is still there for, 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 for recovery and growth. Uh, when you look at our uh, very young population, 85% um, of which are under 25 in the continent, we have a good market, um, and then we are a moderate risk uh, investment levels for, for, for you know, foreign direct investment, as well as the fact that um, you know, there's, there's been some growth in e-commerce and continental, the Continental Free Trade Agreement, which uh, came into effect in the second half of 2020, um, you know, gives hope for optimism. Um, you know, but um, we must contend with the fact that the, the, we are going into a second wave that is proving to be uh, more harmful than the first one. Mm. And let's get into that, uh, Professor. Of course, the IMF is forecasting uh, a modest recovery in 2021. But like you mentioned, we're still in the throes of this pandemic. So what for you will be the most critical factors that will help to fuel a sustained recovery on the continent? Well, um, I would expect, um, you know, uh, governments across the continent to invest in, you know, um, the in, in, information technology sector to invest in food security and to invest in public health. Um, and these will require, um, you know, responsible uh, leadership and good governance, you know, to shelve the corruption and create the right policy and infrastructural environment for both local and foreign um, investments, you know, to take place. So responsible leadership and good governance is, is gonna be a critical factor. Um, and then, you know, um, for governments, once we have a responsible government that does what it's supposed to do in terms of providing the right framework, uh, there should be uh, private sector initiatives to explore the one point, uh, over 1.3 billion markets um, that the Africa uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement, uh, you know, um, has for, for the continent to explore. And I've, I've, the economics are telling us that this will rise to 2.5 billion uh dollars by 2025 so that means the, the the private sector needs to take initiative to explore this uh, market and then we should also focus on manufacturing um while also you know st stimulating uh, smmes in the continent uh, you know the smmes have proven to be resilient during this uh, covid 19 with some government support i think that the government needs to continue to do this support and then uh, the continental free trade agreement area itself would be very critical to to recovery, depending on how you know governments uh, manage uh, you know the thorny issues that usually impede the the implementation of of uh, these kinds of agreement. Um, you know, I've already talked about the investing mm. further in uh, technology enabled sectors. Right. But the last point I will make will be, of course, that of behavioral change. Uh, mm. You know, amongst the people of Africa to take the pandemic more seriously and change their behaviors.
Well, we certainly have to, we do have to leave it there, but many thanks for your insights, uh, Professor Isike. That's Chris Isike. He is a professor at the University of Pretoria.